I want to talk to you about the spirit of prophecy on a woman. And this is going to be very important if you as a woman will be able to break cycles of Satan because the majority of woman's life is, is, is the continuation of the same thing. Is a continuation of the same situation. Women date the same type of men. Women have the same type of outcomes. Women have children. If a woman is having a child, she often has a child with, with the same circumstance. These are cycles. As cycles happen because the spirit of prophecy is not operating on a woman. When a woman has the spirit of prophecy, she has a seer's anointing to recognize how Satan is working against her in her generation and time. If you're, if you, if the female that, that you were in your mother's womb, if your mother didn't accomplish certain things and then now you're not accomplishing it either, like you don't have a lot of money, you don't have a lot of health, you don't have a lot of joy, you don't have a lot of peace. Those are all cycles. So cycles are things that are repetitive. It keeps on happening over and over and over again. There are cycles in some woman's life where they keep getting deceived by the same serpent. The serpent takes them out of confidentiality of God's instruction, what the Lord said to them and takes them somewhere else. And then they come out of that and then they go right back. <laughs> then they come out of that, then they go right back. And when a woman doesn't have the spirit of prophecy on her, moving through her, your life never enters into anything that's supposed to happen. Because look, you, it's, 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 the time is being consumed by the attempt to break the cycle rather than the reward and the harvest and the progress and the promotion and the blessing and the favor and the beautification and the joy and the peace and the restoration. You see, if the construction work is simply on breaking a cycle, all the other things such as rewards and celebrations and graduations and crowns they can't come into existence because the time is being consumed by the breaking of cycles, the attempt to break cycles. The spirit of prophecy, when it's on a woman, she will recognize the witchcraft spirits that are assigned to her personality. Vashti did not see that there was witchcraft spirits assigned to her personality. So when she gets inaugurated as queen, those witchcraft spirits never leave her. They are there. They're waiting for the right time to manifest. But we look at Mary Magdalene has witchcraft spirits. When she gets in the position with Jesus, the witchcraft spirits leave her. So we have two different people in the word right here that we're talking about. We have Vashti, witchcraft spirits, they stay. We have Mary Magdalene, the witchcraft spirits, they go. But Mary Magdalene has the spirit of prophecy. Was it not the Lord that told her to go tell Peter the prophetic word? She has the spirit of prophecy. That's why the Lord will send her to speak to Peter about the prophecy, because she has the spirit of prophecy. So as you can see, a woman that's of the spirit of prophecy is delivered from witchcraft spirits, rebellion. Every woman comes into the earth rebellious. It starts off when you're a little baby. It starts and continues as a little girl, it continues as a teenager. Why do... Ladies, when they get into the teenage stage, they start combating their parents because they're ready to express their rebellion. That's the only reason why. 
you you tell me why would a why, why would you see a teenager cussing out their mom? Because they're ready to express their rebellion. Why do you see a female, she becomes lesbian, she starts defying her parents. She's ready to express her rebellion. So every, every woman comes into the earth with rebellion. If your parents don't beat you, if they don't chasten you, if they don't allow you to walk through a certain divine strategic path of pain, to break you out of your flesh, you grow up evil. You grow up evil as a church woman. You grow up evil as a biblical knowledgeable woman. You grow up evil praying in tongues. <laughs> Cookie monster. You grow up as a prayer warrior witch. You grow up as I'm a prophetess witch. You grow up like that and then we not we talk about religiously, but then there's other aspects. There's people in business. There's people doctors. There's people dentists, insurance, um, uh, customer service reps. There's different type of things, and you never detect the rebellion that you have as a woman, because it's hidden, and it's normal to everybody. Everybody doesn't look at rebellion as if it's bad. There are different terms that people call witches in our day. They call them independent women. They call them strong black women. They call them successful women. They call them powerful women. They call them entrepreneurs. <laughs> call them uh, strong will women. Uh, the, there's different names that people put on women that are rebellious because the world don't see rebellion as God sees rebellion. And witchcraft spirits through the spirit of prophecy is revealed to a woman of the spirit of prophecy. God will show you your own witchcraft spirits. He'll show you the spirits that were with you when you were born that were waiting to infiltrate your decision making, influence your relationships, influence your desires and decide which information you hear in life. Because if you think about it, A lot of times people have a moment where they are being trained by the Lord and witchcraft spirits will tell you, no, leave this, leave this alone. Uh, -uh get away. Because if you stay, they have to go because the training is going to expose how they're operating in your personality and your ways. You ever heard a woman talk and say, I'm the type of person, I'm the type of person. And that'd be the main thing that women like to say. You ever see a woman, especially if they call a business woman, they call her a successful woman. I'm the type of person. I'm the type, I'm the type. And people already develop what type of person they are. And in our actuality, when you become a woman of the spirit of prophecy, your type keeps on changing from glory to glory. It keeps on changing from faith to faith because Esther went from a student. No, 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 no. Let's back it up a little bit. Esther went from an application, an applicator. She applied herself. Then she goes to a student. Then she goes to um, a top three. Then she goes to picked. She goes to wife. She goes to queen. Then she goes to advocate. Now she advocated for the Jews. Her type keeps on changing. When she was an applicator, someone applying herself, it wasn't the same as when she was an advocate. Because when you apply yourself, you don't got the authority as an advocate. You can't advocate for the Jews because you don't got a position yet. So her type keeps on changing. As you can see what I'm saying, this is real powerful what I'm talking to you about. 
the woman of the spirit of prophecy, she does not declare what type of person she is because the type of person she is keeps on graduating according to what stewardship she's been entrusted with. A stewardship is not always the same. So how could you say, I'm the type of person, I don't let people talk to me like that. Well, what happens when you're in the type of season where God wants you persecuted? So everybody that persecutes you, you're going to respond back to them? Uh, hey, hey, no, 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 you can't call me a false woman because... I'm the type of woman I don't let people, hey, 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 you can't talk to, you can't call me a bad mama because, because God called me away from my children because I'm the type of woman that going to tell you I don't let people talk. No, 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 you can't tell me that I, 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 I'm a liar because I'm the type of woman I don't let people talk about me like that. You see, now you're going to be constantly being used by the devil to talk when you're not supposed to talk confront who you're not supposed to confront and you're going to create battles that you're not even supposed to create. You're going to cause arguments, altercations, wars that you're not even supposed to engage in. That There are some wars in your life that's supposed to be one-sided. That means the person is supposed to be fighting you. You're not supposed to be fighting them. It's supposed to be a one-sided war. David was in a one-sided war. He wasn't supposed to fight uh, Saul. He was supposed to fight the emotion that was stirring him to fight Saul. And when you're a woman of the spirit of prophecy, you'll learn that sometimes you're not supposed to fight a person that's fighting you. You're supposed to fight the emotion, the imagination, the thought that's coming to you to fight the person. Saints, when you're a woman of the spirit of prophecy, look at the life of Esther. Even though she knows that Haman is an enemy, look at what she does. She doesn't just scream, I found out something. He's an enemy. He's a liar. He's a trickster. She knows how to talk. She knows the pathway of exposure. She knows the pathway of confrontation. Wow. She knows the pathway of justice. She knows the pathway of advocacy, being an advocate. She calls a meeting at the king's favor towards her. And she wants the king there. She wants Haman there. She wants herself there. And while the meeting is going on, she starts to reveal what Haman was doing to the Jewish people and what was planning to hang them. And she reveals it to the king. The king gets angry. The king is stirred up. His wrath is kindled. He turns against Haman. And then he has Haman hung on the same gallows that he wanted to hang the children of Israel on. All because this woman know how to go in and she knew how to go out. She knew how to go in. She know. See, let me just say this to you. Some of you women too ghetto to be a queen. You, you was created to be a queen, but your ghetto mentality is stopping that type of dimension from coming out of you. You're too ghetto. Because a queen is a woman of composure a woman of calmness and a woman of comfort. She is a classy woman. She doesn't have her own spin to the confrontation. She's led by the Holy Ghost. And watch this here. If you look at Esther, why does she need to go on a three-day fast? Esther knows to subdue all the ghetto approaches that she formerly knew how to operate. She couldn't go to the king and say, hey, bro, what's up, bro? There's something I want to talk to you about today, bro. You know, old bro Haman, uh, he think that he got us slipping, but we not lacking, old king. Uh, let's deal with bro today because he think that 
we ain't going to file him, but we're going to file him today. We're about to squad up and, and, and I'm going to show him who we are. We as Jewish people, we going to stand for our rights. These years of slavery, they had us in slavery all these years. It's time to attack black. And I'm just letting you know, King, if you ain't going to squad up, if you're not going to rise up, I'm a square up because I'm queen. So if you're not down, I got Mordecai down. We got a whole gang of people down, but I'm just giving you a chance to know what's going on. And, 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 and see, King, you should have saw it in the first place. I know that you think that you're so close to God, but how come I know this and you don't know this? You think that you know the people around you, but I know them better than you. You can't even see that Haman is doing. Look, she not even talking to him like that. You notice that, right? She has the revelation, not King Azuris. But look at how she handles the revelation. You know, you should have saw this. You don't even know the people around you not no good. But saints, there's people, that's how they approach kings today. Somebody could be in their kingdom. A man could be in his kingdom. You don't even know the people in your ministry. You don't even know them like that. You don't know what they're doing. And that's how you approach. But look at Esther, her approach. She knows something he doesn't know. And yet she knows how to humble herself and talk to him correctly. Some of you women too ghetto to be a queen. You too ghetto to be a woman of prophecy. You think that that's make you prophetic, that you mouthy and that you're vocal and that you speak your mind and you say what you want to say and you say it how you feel it and you feel it how you say it and you do it how you want to and how you want to, you do it. You think that that makes you a woman, that you stand up for yourself. You think that that makes you a woman, that you know how to fight back. You know how to get revenge. You know how to get, get, get payback. That don't make you a woman of the spirit of prophecy because the spirit of God going to show you anyway. If you do things my way, I'm going to fight the battle. I'm going to give you the victory. I'm going to get vengeance for you. I'm going to get justice for you. So why exert error and input error to a situation that if you do righteousness, I'll fix it for you. A woman of the spirit of prophecy she will not keep on letting the serpent take her out of her assignment. Oftentimes, there are women that are older in years still believing for promises because these are women that keep on letting the serpent take them out of their assignment. When you're a woman of the spirit of prophecy, Satan won't keep on tricking you and taking you out of your assignment. Satan will not keep on taking you out. Satan will not keep on causing there to be a brain freeze. You're going in a momentum with God. Now you got a brain freeze. Now your mind freezes up. Now you start considering stuff. And saints, you know, one of the reasons why women never become women of prophecy, because one thing that happens is this. When God finally gets you to yourself, you done spent your whole life doing stuff in the presence of people, including people, wanting to be around people. And when God finally gets you by yourself, you start going to go seek company all over again. God can't never get you to yourself. You never could be to yourself. You, you already been in relationships. You already was sexing people. You already was having sex without God's authority. You already was doing that. And then when, when God finally gets to yourself, Get you to yourself now. You want you you trying to include folk. You need friends. You need a company. You need attention. You need accomplices. You need people to be by you. Oh, I need to talk. I need to call them for. I need to. And God can never get you to Himself. Throughout the course of your life, you always clicking up with people, and, and you not willing to be alone with the Spirit of God. You always need to grab on to somebody, something. 
And even if God didn't give you a relationship, you're going to create one by force. You're going to make somebody be in your life. I'm going to text them. I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to call them. I'm going to find out. I'm going to email them. I'm going to find out where they live. I'm going to find. And then if you can't even find nobody, then you're going to end up trying to look for your ancestors. You try to find out who got your last name. Who is my blood in my city? You up there trying to do a whole family line search. You need somebody in your life somehow. You can't be to yourself. Every time the Holy Ghost gets you to itself, you go find something to occupy your time all over again. The Holy Spirit can't get you to yourself. You will be way more powerful if you could discern, okay, this is Saturday. I don't have nothing to do according to the natural. Here's a perfect time for me to be quiet before the Lord, to become more prophetic. Did you know that if you would take those moments and seek the Lord, he'll invest power in you. He'll make you great. He'll make you mighty. He'll make you untouchable. And then he'll show you how the devil is tricking you in your current season. He'll open up your eyes and tell you, you know that gift that you received on your birthday? You thought it was innocent. Do you know that the person prayed over the gift before they gave it to you? Do you know that that person that gave you that gift on your birthday, do you know that they did a ritual before they gave you the gift? Do you know that the reason why the spirit's attacking you at night is because you watch this episode, you you watching this, you're looking at this, you're following this person, and that's why the enemy is able to attack you in your sleep. Those moments of quietness before the Lord, he'll show you. And not only things that deal with attack, he'll show you your money. He'll show you your money. He'll show you. Do you know that? $100,000 was supposed to come to you six months ago. But there's a spirit right here that's connected to your personal life that have you doing this and have you saying this and have you connected to this person and the principality is stealing that event from happening because as long as you have given up authority in your personal life to this, they have a say-so on whether this can materialize. God will start talking to you about stuff in your personal life, even financially, why the money is not coming the way it's supposed to come. Why you're not experiencing that healing, that drastic healing in your health that you're supposed to be experiencing. Why your mind is not at 100% voltage, it's not sound, it's not whole yet because of this and that. Why you keep going back to the same addiction, the same bad habit because of this and this and this. Why you can't take authority over your focus because of this, this, and this. And women are always on the go. They're always busy. Even when a woman don't got a reason to be busy, she'll find a reason. If she don't got nobody in her life, she'll, she'll create people in her life. She'll pit them in her life by force. Even if she's supposed to be solo, she going to find somebody to link up with. That's the curse of woman. That whenever God pit them solo, they reach for other people. They don't want to be by themselves. Somebody can look at the story of Adam and say that woman should have should should have had a husband by her. No, a man not always supposed to be with his woman. Is you a child? The only person that needs 100% supervision all the time is a child. When God created this helper, she was not a child. She was a woman. That means not 100% supervision from her man. That's not that unless you are a child. The reason why the serpent's conversation is so interesting because she don't know how to be alone. She would you would you would you would you would you would you say that? There's nobody right there beside her. The serpent come talking. 
and she wants to entertain the words of the serpent because she does not know the wisdom on how to be alone. That woman could have did, been doing many things. She could have been planning her next seed. She could have been planning her next servanthood. She could have been planning her next praise. She could have been blessing the Lord for creating her, for giving her the opportunity to indulge in this great mission. There's a lot of things she could have been doing. She could have been maintaining the information that God gave her and rejoicing over it. But instead, her focus is on her flesh and being alone. And the serpent knows that the psychology of her mind is on herself. So the serpent switches the whole temptation about pleasing herself. That's why people fall to temptation because temptation is Satan training you to worship you. That's why people fall to sin. That's why there's many women in hell today. Because when they came to the earth, look at the woman today. The woman has fallen. They show their behind all over social media. You can't go nowhere on social media without looking at ass. You can't even scroll on your page. You could be a holy man of God. It's going to be ass somewhere. It's going to be body parts somewhere trying to seduce. When women were not created to seduce, they was created to produce. They was created to create. That's why God put a womb inside of a woman. Because he wanted creation to proceed out of her belly, her spirit. That's how she was supposed to be. She was supposed to be an inventor of God's will. Back then, people had to go and, and look at um, explicit sites. All you got to do is get on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and watch how Satan attempts to lure you in. People are naked now. Back then, in the 90s, the 2000s, early 2000s, everything was filtered. Now, because we in this time, of rebellion and witchcraft spirits. Everybody want to show their body without even your permission. You don't want, you can't even say, I don't want to see you. They're walking around naked. You go to the store, you're minding your business. People are walking around naked. You can't even go to a beach. People could wear swimsuits, but then you see other people start walking around naked. What was not normal was that man was not supposed to ever have that issue. But when they sinned, it becomes an issue. You're not supposed to walk around naked. Nobody's supposed to see your body parts. Nobody's supposed to know what your nipples look like. Nobody's supposed to know what your butt looks like. Nobody's supposed to know that. Nobody's supposed to be able to see your intimate parts. It's not normal. It's not normal. But now everybody's trying to make it normal. I don't know if some of you women even recognize that when they make clothes for y'all, most of y'all clothes are see-through. I'm showing you how Satan even has demonized a woman. You go buy a blouse and you find out you can see your bra through the blouse. You go buy a certain type of pants or dress you find out people could see your panties through the dress. Why is that? 
Why would people make clothes that are see-through? The other day, uh, um, one time I was looking at a shirt and I had liked the shirt. And then the Spirit of God let me study the shirt. It was for men, which is kind of rare. They don't really do it for us men like that. But like they do that even in clothes that are not obvious for a woman. Like you think that you're getting a covered outfit, you get the outfit and you can see through it. And I recognized that the shirt was see-through. Uh, I turned my interest from the shirt. They rarely do that for us men. Yes, there is a, a, um, a injustice there. But I also want to pick the point that this is how Satan looks at women. As if you're stupid. You don't have no understanding of nothing. You don't know your value. You're just trash. I use you how I want to use you to get as much people to hell as I want. Saints, just think about all the female figures in the earth right now. They have large followings. But a female rapper, you're not going to hear her talking about Jesus, 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 Lord, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You ain't going to hear her doing that. What's she, what she going to be doing? She's going to be promoting sex. That's the only way they sell. You're not going to see no female artist. And I don't even want to call their names. Because they're not worthy for me to call their names. How do they become famous? By promoting sex. By showing their body. There was a... a um, there was a, a um, I don't want to give too much away so that you can catch what I'm saying, but I just want to give you the note. There was somebody that was successful. They was a champion. They were successful. They was, they was doing good in their field of career. And then all of a sudden, they, they want to start doing videos, showing their self, exposing their body. And all the girl is doing what she sees. She has the spirit of this world and all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life. Now, saints, you can't help if somebody if somebody tries to take a picture of you or a video of you and pit it in the public. You can't help that. But you yourself. When you are the one promoting yourself like that. When you are the one that becomes your stance of image that becomes your interpretation of yourself. And that's how you present yourself. You can't help if somebody blackmail you. You can't help if somebody try to pitch you like you're a tramp. But if you yourself, your self image is to present yourself like a tramp, to seduce, to destroy, to cause random people to look at your body. Random people. Even people you never met before. You want them to look at your body and get aroused. That's witchcraft. And this is how most women are making their money today. What is OnlyFans all about? It's prostitution. The only way that women make a lot of money on OnlyFans is if they are sexually distributing their image. That's how they make millions. They have to be sexual. Do you think that somebody gets on OnlyFans and makes a million dollars because they're preaching the word? The world is all about the lust of the flesh. And that's what Satan been using women as pawns ever since Eve. As if she doesn't know her value. So anybody could hug her. Anybody could touch her. Anybody could kiss her. Anybody could open her legs. Anybody could text her phone. Anybody could get her conversation, get her attention. That's not a woman of the spirit of prophecy. Woman of the spirit of prophecy, you can't touch this.
Women of the spirit of prophecy are not in the face trying to get attention from people that are not even a part of her path. They are not a part of her future. The woman of the spirit of prophecy recognizes I'm here for the Lord. Why would I rob the Lord of seeing me be who he picked me here to be? I already did that. And some of you women, you got to get in your mind. I already did that. I already did what I wanted to do. I already slept with who I want to sleep with. I already text who I wanted to text. I already walked in rebellion. Now I'm here for the Lord. I already saw what sin could I do? What could I get hooked on? What could I bring myself pleasure? What could I make myself feel like I'm, I'm intoxicated? I'm in a high. I'm feeling great about myself. I already did that. But now I'm here for the Lord. It's crazy to me when I see woman that you done lived all type of lifestyle and then you still pitting up a fight. That's what shocks me. I mean, you done fought all your life. You done did what you wanted to do. And then later on, you still fighting. That's what shocks me. That's what makes me shake my head. How you dukes all your life and then God put you in a season of no duxing and now you crying like the world ended. You acting like you've been a virgin all your life. Woman be in relationship with a man playing house like that man is your man and you is woman. And y'all done made up a fairy tale story in your mind. And that man got devils. You got devils too. I ain't going to say that a man just got devils. You got devils too. Because you feel with the Holy Ghost, you wouldn't accept nothing that wasn't God's will. You accept things that's not God's will because demons are inside of you. Demons are okay with defying God's purpose. They're okay with it. But when you become a woman of the spirit of prophecy, what? It is the testimony of Jesus. And Jesus' testimony is not being tricked by the devil. Jesus' testimony is not losing his destiny. Jesus' testimony is not falling short of the glory. Jesus' testimony is not being distracted. Jesus' testimony is not claiming false family. He said, who is my family? Those that do the will of the Father. If they're not doing God's will, don't tell me that mama outside waiting to talk to me. Don't tell me that brother came to visit me because the will of the Father is for me to be talking and teaching right now. So don't interrupt me and tell me me that I got a family out there because the only one that's my family is those that could agree with everything that I'm doing. They can't agree with everything I'm doing. They're not my family. They can't agree with my skin. They're not my family. They can't agree with my understanding, my knowledge. They're not my family. I'm talking about the woman of the spirit of prophecy. She will not be another statistic of Satan's vomit. Remember, the Bible talks about in Proverbs that a dog returns back to its vomit. Are you a dog or a queen? Because we see what queens do. Queens hate evil. Queens hate deception. Queens hate interruption of their purity. Queens hate. They hate the spirits of uncleanness, evil spirits. They hate the principalities that war in their city to cause their life to become another statistic of destruction and famine and sickness. The woman of the spirit of prophecy, she won't fail because she don't need a chaperone. She don't need a surveillance camera of somebody watching her 24 hours. She herself has made up in her mind to do God right. The woman of the spirit of prophecy has made up in her mind that she not going to spend another day robbing God of her body, of her mind, of her emotions, of her decision making. The woman of the spirit of prophecy she don't need you to keep reminding her of how great she is. She understands her greatness. She's living in her greatness. 
She's moving in her greatness. And her greatness is not rooted in pride. Her greatness is rooted in patience. Her greatness is not rooted in disrespect. Her greatness is rooted in diligence. Her greatness is not rooted in fear, is rooted in faith. Her greatness is not rooted in sin. Her greatness is rooted in sowing herself. Her greatness is not rooted in bitterness. Her greatness is rooted in the blessing. Her brain is empowered by God's words, God's strength, God's will, God's presence, God's person, and she's a pursuer of the Lord. She's a woman of the spirit of prophecy. So she knows the testimony of Jesus. What was the testimony of Jesus? He sought the Lord. He was always talking by his father. He was always after his father's heart. The woman of the spirit of prophecy is always seeking the father, always after the father's heart.